Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyid, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. I'm good. How are you, Habibi? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So we have you here again, and for today's topic, it's going to be about akhlaq and social media. And this is something that maybe not a lot of people realize can be an issue, and it is pretty much an issue. So I want to I want you to touch up upon how people speaking on social media, how much it actually is like it can hurt people or like people use the excuse like, well, it's on social media, you know, it, it can't really harm anyone or they're more comfortable saying things on social media as opposed to real life. Like they wouldn't say it in real life, but they say it on social media. You know, what what are the, the right ways to speak on social media? Another name for online mannerism, e akhlaq So your activity on social media, on the internet, should reflect the activity and your degree of akhlaq offline. I feel that's a very basic principle to observe and maintain. However, many people pull the excuse of being keyboard warriors and they're behind the screen they feel they're able to talk about as many things as they want however they like to whomever they want whereas offline they would never dare speak that way that's not an excuse to go after someone just because you're a comment on a comment section the person on the receiving end can still take that as serious they'll feel bullied that odd comment, that odd whatever. I remember there were there was a a scholar um, in our community and in other communities as well. I've seen this happen, where they are constantly the subject of Shia phobia. You find people constantly laughing at them. They'll take scenes, they'll take clips, and they'll just ridicule them, bully them. But you know what? They'll never dare say that in person. Why? Because online, somehow their muscles, subhanAllah, came out. Somehow they became stronger. Well, that's a coward thing to do. Because if you manage to garner your strength by being more private and incognito, truly, at your core and at your origin, you are a weak human being. And we should also keep that in mind. Because our interaction online has major ramifications in ways we don't perceive. Online bullying is a big deal. There were documentaries, I've seen a few of them on Netflix that talk about the dangers of online bullying. Circulating photos of a person in an unflattery, unflattering manner or, or their insecurities are being highlighted. These, they look laughable. We can make memes about them. We can troll that. And it's, it is pure comedy, but not at the expense of another person's dignity. So online mannerism is completely necessary to acknowledge study and to make sure we engage in to the highest degree possible because it does affect people and there are cases where people unfortunately have taken away their lives have made poor decisions because of what they've seen online now that doesn't mean we think ourselves as constantly punching bags if we see a word, you should also muster up some strength at the same time because the online world is a frontier of various people who hate you, who love you, who want to make fun of you. Don't take a comment as doctrine. They said that about me. Maybe that's true. No, it's not. Who cares? Move on. It's literally probably a 12-year-old, subhanAllah, who's living somewhere far away, and they're very mean. It's okay. You got this. You can handle this. It's just a poor comment. At the same time, don't make yourself susceptible to having people state their negative opinions on you by just feeding their material, feeding them with material rather. So for example, I know people, they share their social life all the time online. They share how much money they have without even saying it. Just a picture. Money, the watches, the car, the this, the that. Listen, none of that is haram. Not saying anything is haram. But you're putting yourself in a situation where you got eyes out there that are envious. Yeah. How often you travel, 
You can share photos. Do it. It's fun. Share it with your friends and family. It's not a problem. But if you do this a lot, don't be too surprised that there are going to be envious eyes. The hasid is going to be like, dang, yeah. they travel a lot. They have a lot of that. Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Ustar thalath, conceal three things. Madhabak, your school of thought. Why? Because there are parts of the world and there are certain people that will attack you purely based on your beliefs. Madhabak, wadhabak, and your gold, meaning your wealth and finances. Don't flaunt that all the time. There are envious people out there. Wadhabak, and your travels. People love to share, oh, I went here and I went to Belize, then I went to Peru, then I went to etc. Okay, that's very nice. Share it with the right people. Not the old open world. So if you do get someone ridiculing you, envying you, showing that hasad to you, try to be more robust. That's the world we live in. Don't take it very personal, even though the attacks are personal. But at the same time, try not to necessarily put yourself in these positions where you do become like a bullseye for attacks sometimes. You know, uh, there's a funny trick that me and my family have about you know, not oversharing online when it comes to like, you know, posting what you have. So people, you know how they like to take a picture of their food before they eat it yeah. because it looks so marvelous or it looks right, right. so yummy. <laughs> right, right, right. So I never take a picture of my food or post anywhere at least because me and my family have this little like uh, joke that if we post our food and someone gives us evil eye, we're going to choke on the food while we eat it. <laughs> so I feel like that's a trick to not... You know, overshare on the hey, internet. Yeah, it's one way of thinking. You know, if we share this, we're going to probably choke on it later. <laughs> um, yeah, these are like ways to approach life because, yeah, these things turn into habits. There's nothing wrong with taking yeah. a picture of your stuff and showing it, your food, your house, your trip. These are okay. But just keep in the back of your mind that it's very possible that there are those who are envy, yeah. who, I'm, who I am sharing these things to. And this also goes back to the mannerism aspect. Yeah, It's not that it's bad manners if you share stuff about your life. It's totally fine. But some of these have some connotations with them. Mannerism also involves opposite gender interaction. Many people don't realize that. But it stems from the same bloody excuse, oh, it's just online, so it's not really me interacting with her or him. Like, I wouldn't say that offline. So, for example, like what? Like commenting a heart. Yeah, posting hearts or even yeah. just sliding into the DMs. Sliding as someone's DMs yeah. and saying, wow, that was really beautiful. Yeah, That was such a wonderful thing. Can you share more? Can you, et cetera? I'm so jealous. You would never talk like that in person. You exactly. know that. Yeah. Or for example, the whole excuse on sending a heart, right? Yeah. A heart. What's wrong with a heart? It's the most simple. It's an expression of support and endorsement. No, a heart is a symbol of love. Um, I'm not anti-heart. Send it to your boys as much as you like, okay? There's nothing wrong with having a bromance. But when you comment a heart on a girl's photo and you're a man, if she's married, do you not feel that's a violation of her relationship? Yeah, you cross the boundary some when you man is just yeah. sending a heart. Or if you're married, do you feel that your spouse or partner is totally fine with you sending other women, single women, hearts, now, we can't take this without a grain of salt. Sometimes people are commenting to their family. Even with family, you have to be a little bit more cautious. Maybe others don't know that that's your family. Yeah. So they'll just start judging. Well, it's their fault for judging. Well, you can't blame them for assuming because how do they know that that's your aunt, for example? I have nothing against that. However, you, for example, sending a heart, not you, of course, sending her because you're a chivalrous young man, <laughs> sending a heart... To a sister, right, who's put a post of her face or her body or her figure, etc. And I'm not even saying done inappropriately, which is another topic, inshallah, I feel it would be cool to address. Yeah. Um, posting yourself, men versus women. Is there a decency of that? Is that fine? Is there anything wrong with that? But would you, for example, write or draw a heart on a paper and gift it to another girl as a sign of endorsement? In real life. No, you're not. That's just literally yeah. sending a love note. So when you do it online, somehow it has nothing to do with that. It's just, I completely support you. I endorse you. 
If you really endorse and support, you can make that apparent by commenting, for example, in a manner that is clear. MashaAllah, have fun. Whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? I would venture to say even then, bro, who cares, man? You're a man, this is a woman. Are you married? You're not necessarily married. Are you engaged? No, you're not. She is. There are boundaries, man. There are yeah. masculine, feminine boundaries. She's not your wife. She should only be the recipient of hearts from someone who was allowed to be intimate with her. Shara'an. Islamically and socially. That could be her husband. Her children can express their affection to her. For example, and I'm saying this from the side of the man because I'm on social media myself. Yeah. And I see these guys out there just commenting hearts, kisses, roses, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, I can't help to imagine she's probably not your wife, dude. Yeah. She really is. So why are you doing that? So where's your, we call that rujuliyah. Where's your masculinity, man? When you're going to get married and you have this history, do you feel that your wife will appreciate that? And the mother of all sadness is that, yeah, there are those who have partners who are completely complacent about that. Yeah, he's just sending her a heart. Yeah, but you should value your relationship more and not tolerate that sort of, sort of interaction. What makes you special? He sends her a heart, he sends you a heart. And you ask, what makes you special all of a sudden? Is that he can only, he, you're the only one he, he can be a bit more physical and intimate with, but that's literally the only exception. No, yeah. you should be venerated, honored. You, as my spouse, I will treat you, I will speak with you in ways no other woman can be spoken to. Because that you shouldn't be compared to any other lady when you are my lady, for example. And the same goes with sisters. That interaction has become very lousy and petty and people need to get a life. Oh, I love that. I love you. Sending hearts here, roses there, sliding in DMs there. Okay, are you guys married? Are you guys engaged? Are you even planning on that? I'll even give benefit of the doubt. Are you considering getting married? Even though that type of interaction before marriage Still. Is, is reprehensible. Yeah. It's not it's not allowed. There are professional ways to do so. Then why bother doing that? Get a life, <laughs> in my humble <laughs> opinion. There are ways where you can show endorsement without doing these things yeah. that are completely synonymous with pure affection and intimacy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you talked about it a little bit with uh, the way people post online. I want to get your opinion or just your thoughts on this. What do you think of the people who are posting the pictures to begin with like sometimes sisters will post pictures of themselves like their face and there's men who can see it and of course other sisters as well uh is this something allowed is it not allowed what are your thoughts on this i can see why some people will think that it's hot on it's not hot on it's not hot on for a sister to upload a photo of herself online it's not forbidden it's not impermissible. In a lot of cases, it's not even discouraged or makruh. If we're speaking about a professional, modest, formal sister who can even be a source of inspiration for other young sisters, who can be, and we're not saying she has to be, but what if she is yeah. an inspirational speaker, a motivational speaker? And if that's the nature of your career, then you kind of technically have to be in the public scene. Is she doing something haram? No, she's not. But I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that there are problems when brothers and sisters, and I yes include brothers, get a little too comfortable when they post footage of themselves online or content, photos. We live in a world today, man, I'm, not, I'm just going to say it's a hypersexual world. Yeah. Um, and sometimes there are trends out there that are raunchy, yeah. provocative, flivorous, promiscuous, um, that from the outset don't seem wrong. I'm just, you know, being me here. But the trend is a negative trend. It's an ab trend. Ab meaning impermissible to the degree where it's inappropriate, unbefitting. You are worth more than that to engage in some of these activities that involve like trend dancing. Yeah. We're not dancing. We're not just talking about dancing. We're just talking about behavior that is not worth your value. That's inappropriate, pretty much. Unbefitting for a man with dignity to come forth and start acting like a clown. Because you know what a clown is versus a comedian? A clown is someone that will make fun of themselves, make others laugh, 
at his own expense. Yep. He will humiliate himself, pour water on himself, etc. So we're not saying, is there something haram being done? No. It's your dignity is so much more valuable than to be treated that way. Whereas a comedian will tell a joke and make people laugh, not at his own dignity's expense. Don't engage in the clown behavior of social media. I'm just going to say it. Because we live in this world today where it's a hypersexual world. Here, someone will post footage of their fun time. I agree, that's almost a fun time when you went to Santorini, Greece. Mashallah on you. But will use music in that reel yeah. from very inappropriate rappers. Baba, that's what's trendy right now. There's nothing wrong with that. It's literally so popular from how much we've been on social media, you and I. We are so familiar with these tunes that are out there. We don't listen to these music, these rappers, but these are so popular now. Now, my guys, these youth are coming out, some of my friends and these guys, are posting their footage, but then they're using that because that is what's trendy. Yeah. La. No, you shouldn't do that. Because the origin of that is negative. The rapper is someone who only speaks about the most filthy things in life. Drugs and sex and money and violence and abuse and so on and so forth. And the list goes on. And materialism to the highest degree. It's all about that. To come and share that with the innocence of oh, it's just there. In fact, the words weren't even there. It was just a tune from this guy. No. Are there not other tunes out there? Don't you have more integrity? It's social media. The whole world decided to go one way. It's the age-old elementary example. If everyone decided to jump off a cliff, yeah. would you do it? No, you wouldn't do it. But you would do it if it's online because that's a social media excuse. No, the manners you maintain offline, maintain them online. It's not hard. This is called chivalry. Fatuwa, you're a young man. You're healthy. You're strong and you have dignity. Allah, that is the most impressive thing you've ever seen. You know what, Ahmed? Because young men have every excuse. Young men and women. Mm -hmm. Young men have every excuse to not be practicing or spiritual or maintain morals or principles. Why would they? They're young. They're energetic. They have their life ahead of them. It's the whole thinking of Oh, later I'll go to yeah, Hajj. Yeah. Well, guess what, buddy? Now there's a lottery system for yeah, Hajj. Yeah. What happened when you could have, and now you can't? That's a bad mentality. Do you see? Have. You see yeah. the reality? It's very bad. Yeah. Later I'll do this. When I go to Hajj, I'll put on a hijab. Put on a hijab. You're trying to say, I will become more modest and decent and honor my figure by not allowing every Tom, Dick, and Harry to stare at it, except those who deserve so from my intimate family. When I go to Hajj, well, guess what happened to Hajj now, pal? <laughs> now we can't go unless you unless win you the get a lottery yeah. of all things. How ironic, right? Young chivalrous people, Allah highlights how much He loves them so much. They have every excuse going for them. Not in the last moment of death does a person become a mu'min, because it was also Fir'aun who said, yeah. "Al-an amantu bi Rabbi Musa wa Harun." As the waves are crashing into him, the Red Sea is taking him in and he's drowning Allah was like take that iman back to where it came from you're saying that now you had all Musa preached to you day and night miracles he showed you and you're an old man and you're being collapsed under the Red Sea and now you say al -al 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 there's no more al -an. you're not a mu'min you died a kafa even though you made the shahada clear Allah looks at the opposite in the Quran and in Surah Al-Kahf the seven sleepers. These guys are young. Hadith mentioned they're strong. They're handsome. They can get any girl they want. They have all the money at their disposal if they want to. They can work. What's wrong with them? They have a dog. They're running away from an abusive society because they want to maintain their faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not worship deities made by man. So they're persecuted and then they run away and Allah opens for them doors they thought could never be opened. They slept for 300 years. After that happened, God in the Quran said something so remarkable. And this can apply to all of us today. It definitely does, inshallah. Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ They were fitya from the word fatuwa, fata. 
They were young, chivalrous, strong men who had everything going for them. Yet they still believed in their Lord. So what did we do? We gave them ziyada of hidayah. We gave them extra guidance. You already are guided because you amen to be rabbik. Amen to be rabbik rather. I'm going to give you extra. Why? Because you have every excuse not to. So I'm going to give you extra guidance. Learn us the word. Innahum fitiyatun. From futuwa, chivalry. And the singular is fatha. What statement do we recall with that word later on? La fatha illa Ali. Wala saif illa dhul fiqar. There is no young chivalrous man like Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is the example, the role model example of young, strong, healthy, intelligent, wise, foresight, altruism, and wisdom combined all together. That is pure devotion to Allah. This whole mindset of it's fine, it's just online. Where's your chivalry as a young man? Be mature, man up. Where's your dignity? Don't you have a wife? Won't you have a wife? Think about that future wife. But you're not married now. You can have fun. There's no chance you're going to ever be in a relationship where you will be devoted to a lady who will serve you until she dies. And you will serve her until you die. Don't you feel she won't appreciate that in the history if you just went around throwing hearts here and there. Love terms here and there. Endearing words here and there. Those are sanctified words reserved for only a special group of people. Yeah, I wouldn't appreciate that if someone, if my wife did that previously. Who know? would appreciate yeah. that? Your masculinity is that question if you're completely complacent. Yeah. That those who are meant to be your sources of love and you are meant to be the only source of intimate love to them are kind of sharing that with other people. Yeah. That's not to say that people can go out and just interact and engage online. There's, there's nothing haram in that. And I will even go as saying... Go as far as saying, even with the opposite gender. We live in this world today where human interaction is necessary. Acknowledging others is fine. In fact, important. Even if it's the opposite gender. But done professionally. Is it so hard to do things professionally? Why is it so hard to be formal, professional, maintain your dignity? Someone asked you a question, respond back. Don't end it with XXO, heart, heart, rose. <laughs> There's no, there's no need for that. I know people want to eventually garner a relationship, right? Yeah. So they're like, but I kind of need to go through this phase. Is that justified? Now we're talking. This is a, a point, a discussion that is healthy to have with someone who's in that process, in that situation. There's a great deal of benefit with social media interaction. One of them is that if you don't know anyone in your community, you can eventually meet that person who can be your potential prospect online. But there are still ways to maintain communication with them without being very intimate at the beginning. Show yourself as a responsible, mature individual because if you start off in that way, no woman will ever appreciate, nor man will ever appreciate that you already began the discussion in a very close and up close and personal manner because oh if it doesn't work with me you're just going to do it with someone else that way or that hints that you've done it already with somebody else and you're just always open to showing that you're interested in marriage not nah, be reasonable and smart in that approach there are ways to approach people online without jeopardizing your own dignity which is basically the summary of what i am trying to stress and highlight right now certain emojis so I, I know, they're small, they're emojis, what are they going to do? Okay, they go a long way. What are you going to say about that? They go a long way. This emoji combined with that emoji means something very bad. Yeah. <laughs> this one in that sentence has a lot of depth in, in it. You have to be a bit more cautious and careful. And how you mentioned sliding in DMs, that means you're talking private messages. Yeah. PM private this is only between you and that individual. Exactly. Think of it as if you are trapped in a room with that individual. Whatever you're saying, you have to be careful. And we hear about the hadiths that discuss if you're alone with the opposite gender. And shaitan, shaitan is the third yeah. of the three. 
So you are alone with the opposite gender on social media. Shaitan's not there suddenly? No, he's definitely there. Not there? <laughs> not just shay- shayateen are there. Multiple shaitans are there. And they come in the image of emojis. Oh, yeah. They come in the image of innuendos, acronyms. People need to watch out, by the way, on this. Yeah. There are certain acronyms that are inappropriate. Yeah, and people use them every day as if... It's like, like some people are like, oh, come on. You're going <laughs> to even make that haram? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's a bad term to yeah. use under normal circumstances. Exactly. Somehow they're halal when they're used in acronym formats. And if that's the best way you can express your thoughts, then you have no communication skills. You have no communication skills. If you have to express, we're not saying acronyms are haram, by the way. La. We're saying acronyms from sentences that are typically extremely haram sentences, yeah. inappropriate sentences, vulgar words. Stuff that filth brings filth to the tongue and mouth. We have that beautiful statement: "Attiru afwahakum fi dhikr salati ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad." Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Perfume and fragrance your mouth with the salawat of the Prophet and his family. Don't come and make it filthy using other words that are completely reprehensible. Oh, but they become halal when they're used in inc- acronym format. No, they're not. You are a professional, dignified human being. You believed in your Lord, and Allah will give you extra guidance for doing so. For you have every excuse to do haram now, but you decide not to, Allah greatly appreciates that from a person. Perhaps we can conclude with this right here. So for me, I feel like akhlaq, it starts from, you know, in person. And maybe if you're if you're good with your akhlaq, it'll be better online as well. Is there any tips you can give for people to not only improve their akhlaq online, but in person, so that way it can be linked together? You know, you improve in real life, you can also improve online. Treat others the way you want to be treated. People forget that all the time. It's such a simple, common idea. I have to remember I'm dealing with another human being. Yeah, it's a code on the computer screen. But behind that is another human being with struggles, with a family, with problems with obstacles with health issues for example with many things think of that remind yourself of that this is someone's son daughter husband wife etc and treat others the way you feel you will greatly appreciate being treated for we're all on this green blue planet together yeah and we're not here forever so while we're here let's do some good in the world and you can take advantage of social media positively. Social media is a beautiful thing. There's this trend that scholars and speakers often put down social media. No, not necessarily. Scholars and speakers, speakers who know their worth and know the value of social media, don't put down social media. They put down the negative aspects of it and yeah. the dangers because there's already so many problems in real life. Now we have to deal with social media. So it comes across as, okay, you're just anti-social media. No. These are the same scholars and speakers that will have accounts on that platform as well. But like there are dangers in real life, there are dangers online. Like the way we need to maintain our akhlaq in real life, we also need to maintain our akhlaq online as well. E akhlaq. Ahsan, thank you so much, Sayyid, again for your time and for all the valuable information that you have given us. And inshallah, we can learn and improve our akhlaq. Make sure to like and comment and share my latest (laughs) posts, by the way. Inshallah, inshallah. (laughs) Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.